So you would it and I are labeled in the uh, international media as settlers. And we had a um, very, very interesting debate uh, on Shabbat. You know, I'm from Belgium originally, and so I don't catch the, my mother tongue is French. So I was told that the word settler is a bad word, uh, or is a negative, a pejorative word. Um, but I want to tell you that we are very proud settlers, because in Hebrew, for instance, In Hebrew, the word settler is mitnachalim. I don't know if you speak Hebrew, but in Hebrew, the word mitnachalim means chazarnu lenachalat avot. We came back to the inheritance of our forefathers. And we discussed on Shabbat that maybe the word settlers, if it has such a bad connotation in English, which I don't know with my French ear, maybe we should translate it better as inheritors. We came to inherit our land again. This is our land, and we are very proud to say it loud and clearly. <laughs> a year ago, Nomi calls me and says, uh, Nadia, I'm here. We hadn't seen each other since the expulsion. You know, we, we were happy to see each other. And she says, you know, I need to go somewhere. Uh, let's go for a morning for some spiritual strength, etc. I said, if you want some chizuk, if you want some strength, you have to go to, an, to somewhere, to one of the communities in Judea and Samaria. Let's go to Maaleh Rechavam, I said. She looked at me, she had a face like, she was very surprised. She said, how do you know my special relationship with Maaleh Rechavam? I said, I don't know. I just know it's not far from where I live and it's a nice place. And she says, well, let me tell you the story of Maaleh Rechavam, what, what my connection, she says, to Maaleh Rechavam. And here she tells me this incredible story. Seven years before, i.e. Uh, in 90, um, when, uh, when uh, Minister Gandhi was murdered, which was in 19, you know, in 2000, well, I don't exactly remember. In 2001, okay. In 2001, she's in uh, Los Angeles. She gets a call from her boss who tells her to uh, go and make a story about the settlers. Go to Israel and have a photo story about the settlers. She gets to Israel. She was not very involved at the time. She calls a friend. says, listen, I have to make a story about those settlers. Bring me somewhere. I'll take a few pictures and I'll go home. He says, well, wait a minute. What, what, what settlers do you want to you know, photograph? He says, uh, 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 what kind of settlement? A huge settlement, a city like Ariel, like Mal a, or a religious uh, uh, settlement, a non-religious settlement, an agricultural set settlement, a leftist settlement, a right-wing settlement. What do you want? So I have a void. Don't, uh, I don't know. Just bring me somewhere. I want to get this over with and let's go. So this guy told her, well, they just, I just heard on the news that they created this new community called Maler Chavam in memory of this minister that had just been murdered south of Jerusalem, uh, very close to Tekoa. Let's go there. Let's see. And she tells the story how she drives to Maler Chavam uh, and gets to this barren hill in the middle of the winter. I assume she didn't say it, but the way she was telling me that she was dressed, you know, high heels, etc. There she gets to this uh, hill. And uh, uh, in the morning, and uh, the people say, well, who are you? Are coming to do a story about you. I so, said, well, we can't really be with you. We'll leave you alone with this guy called Gidi. We'll come back tonight, and we'll, we'll tell you she says, what, why you're here. What, what is the meaning of being a settler? And there she is spending the entire morning with a stranger uh, in a caravan. It was raining, and she keeps on nudging him. What are you doing here? What is it to be a settler? Why are you here? What are you doing? There's nothing here. And he was nudging her so much that he told her, OK, you know, you want to know, you know, with the Hebrew accent. You want to know why we're here, what it is to be a settler, come with me, put on your coat. And there they go out of the caravan, there was just a few caravans, and the earth was wet because it had been raining, and he takes a shovel and starts digging. And, here's, and she said to me, and here I am, alone on this hill, with this complete stranger, and he's digging a hole in the ground. And what's going to happen? And, uh, and uh, he digs and he digs, and then he kneels down. And she says, he kneels down and he takes a big chunk of earth, red earth, and he says, you want to know what the settlers are all about? You want to know why we're here? Here, smell. And he put it next to her nose, next to her face, and, he's, and she, he says, close your eyes. And she closes her eyes, and he says, this is where Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov walked. This is where your Jewish, Jewish history and my history happened, and this is why we are here. And she said, when she told me the story in the car, she said that's when she felt the entire history going through her body. She, she never had such a spiritual experience as feeling 
why she was there in the land of Judea, a few kilometers between Jerusalem and Hebron. And sometimes, that's, I tell that story very often because sometimes we take it for granted that we have Israel. Sometimes we forget that it is a miracle that we're there, that we have uh, uh, returned, that we live in Eretz Israel, and sometimes we forget that we must fight to keep it. And um, when I talk to youth, I know that you know what I'm talking about, um, but very often we have to remind the people the story of the settlers. And I will use the word settlers because I want to say that again. I'm very proud of the label of being settlers because we came to settle the land. And when I talk to youth, uh-oh, one second, just when we need a computer, hold on. Ta -da. That's it. So, whenever something like that happens, we say it's the leftists. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> and, um, we go around with a kid to remind people, and it's good that we remind ourselves also that the first settlers uh, of the Jewish people, I always speak with the youth, and I say, who were the first settlers? We spoke at Eula, you did and I uh, uh, on Thursday. Who were the first Jewish settlers? So you always get answer in the 1800s, in the 1900s. So no, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they came and they settled the land, and they were the first settlers. And we have to go through the Jewish history of the settlers' movement. Let's go through Jewish history very, very quickly. Don't worry, I won't bore you. Since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the way, uh-oh, what now? Okay, so turn off oh, okay, thank you. I'm completely computer illiterate, illiterate, so I don't know what you're doing, but okay, as long as the map comes back. We'll be back on. So all through Jewish history, we have to remember, yes, we, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we came and we settled the land. And uh, uh, um, all the way through first, to the first temple, the second temple, after the second temples, uh, I will need the map very soon. After the Second Temple destruction, the, despite the exile, there were always Jews in the land of Israel, with the four holy cities, Jerusalem, Hebron, Tiberias, uh, uh, Tzfat, uh, uh, all the way to modern times. Now you can go to the next, uh, to the next, uh, uh, the next one. Go ahead. And I'm going to make you work, Alan. Oh, here we go. All the way through the history, we had the entire area was always conquered by different uh, uh, nations who tried to take over our land. But Jews were there all the time. Then we had the, all the way, we had the Crusaders, etc., 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 the Turks. And then, of course, we had uh, uh, the British. I know you know this. I'm just showing you what kit we're using for the youth when we talk to the youth. And we had Palestine, uh, the British mandate over Palestine. Now, we know in this room where the name Palestine came from. From. But we have to remind most people who forget that the word Palestine is not a new invention. I, was, I just read an article that in France they had a, um, a poll among students in France and they asked them what is Palestine. And the majority of students there said that Palestine was this wonderful Palestinian country that was taken over by those bad Jews and destroyed by those bad Jews and who created Israel instead of Palestine. Now we, it is our job as activists to remind the people that that Palestine is a name that the Romans used after they destroyed the Second Temple, after they killed thousands of Jews, after they uh, destroyed the, the, the Second Temple, they crushed us even more. Uh, 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 and, 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 and when you crush a person, really, uh, you go to that person and say, you can't use your name anymore. They came to the Jews, as we all know, and said, you can't use the word Ju uh, Judea or Israel anymore. You have to call the area Palestine. And as we know, Jerusalem, we were not allowed to call Jerusalem anymore. We had to call it Alia Capitolina. And we have to remind this to our you youngsters, to our youth, that the name Palestine has been used to describe, as you had sent out a few days ago, this incredible article, that the word Palestine is a description of a geographical area. It is not the name of a country that ever existed, and there are no Palestinians. My uncle, the Jewish uncle, was a Palestinian because he lived in Palestine, which we, the Jews, uh, called Eretz Israel. We continue to call the area Eretz Israel. And of course, in 1920, people forget that in 1920 we had the area allocated as a Jewish national home. And you can, Alan, you can p push on the button. And this map just shows you the history of the of uh, of the area, which of course here in this room you know. 
uh, of the big British betrayal. But let's remember together, it's important that we sometimes remind ourselves also, the, uh, the, the picture that we saw before is Eret Israel. The, when people say, what is Eret Israel? is the picture we saw before. That is the entire Eret Israel. Then came the big British betrayal, and they told this little guy called Abdallah, they gave him 70% of our land, where he created Jordan, and we were stuck with only 22% of the land of Israel. Let's remember that. But even those 22% that are in yellow there, uh, uh, that wasn't enough for them to give us our own land. And we go to the next picture. Uh, in 48, the UN, again, I know you know that, but uh, it's good to have this as a kit. The uh, partition plan, the, we were told, sorry guys, even those 22% are not enough. Uh, uh, you guys will get whatever is yellow. The, uh, the, we'll create a new Arab state in whatever is gray, and Jerusalem will be international. Of course, we are after the Holocaust. We said, just give us anything. The Arabs, of course, did not agree. We'll go on to the next, next picture. Uh, 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 the, 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 after the 48 war, we have Judea and Samaria conquered by Jordan. We have Gaza conquered and occupied by Egypt. Uh, uh, the Golan Heights occupied by Syria. Let's go on. We know the history. Uh, um, Sinai campaign. We take uh, Sinai, give it away. And then we have the miraculous uh, six-day war. We go back home, back to Judea. As you did said, we came back home. Judea, Samaria, Gaza, the Golan, are, uh, New Shalim are in our hands. Let's continue. The, the next, I'm just showing off all those maps, uh, the maps of the different cities. Then we have this crazy peace plan, which is uh, the most uh, 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 crazy thing we ever did, where we gave away for so-called fake peace, we gave to Egypt uh, 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 all our oil supplies. And let's continue. Um, uh, and on and on, those are maps we'll, uh, I'll go on in, in a minute. And what I, I'm trying to say is that we as activists, we have to remind, we who know the history, we sometimes forget that other people don't know the history. And we have to remind them. We have to remind them that uh, 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 this is our land and that we cannot give it away. So when I talk to youth, I always tell them, we cannot give away any parts of our homeland for one reason, because of my earrings. So you know youth, they're not very concentrated and say, what is this lady talking about? So I always take off my earring here, which um, uh, I show off and I tell them that this earring has, was made by my dear mother-in-law, Ruth Matar, who founded Women in Green also. And um, when my husband asked to marry me, he, was, he said, before you say yes, um, I want you to know that I'm going to buy the jewelry from my mommy. And she, Baruch Hashem, Ruth Matar is a beautiful jeweler. And one of the incredible things she does is ancient Jew, uh, is, is, is jewelry with ancient Jewish coin. And the coin I'm holding now is the coin of the Second Temple period. I have coins with the Bar Kokhva period. And when I tell those kids, the reason we can't give away parts of Eretz Israel is because uh, the history, those coins that are, represent our, our Jewish history, imagine that Jews 2,000, 3,000 years ago were holding those coins and they were buying fruit with it and doing stuff with it. Those coins, you can dig as long as you want in Tel Aviv. You're not going to find one ancient Jewish coin. But if you, if you um, dig in Jeris between Jerusalem, Shechem, Hebron, uh, uh, that is where our history is. And a normal people doesn't give away his roots. And I tell those kids then, do you know Jean-Marie Le Pen? The kids, of course, usually don't know this right-wing fascist in France. If tomorrow he comes to power and he will tell uh, uh, the people in France, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am now a uh, the, the president of France, uh, and there is a very big problem uh, in Paris uh, between the Jews and the Muslims. Uh, and the Jews and the Muslims, they constantly fight. And I want peace. I am a man of peace. So in order for there to be peace uh, in uh, Paris, uh, I decided on this incredible peace plan. From uh, next month on, I will decide no more Jews are allowed in Paris. All the Jews have to leave Paris. And that then there will be peace. All the Jewish synagogues will be given over to the Muslim uh, to turn into mosques. All the Jewish high schools and schools will be given away to the Muslims uh, to turn into Muslim schools. And all the Jewish homes of the Jewish community of uh, the Jews in, uh, in Paris will be given over to Muslims. And then you will have peace. All of us, of course, I tell those kids, all of us, us will come and rise up and we'll tell him anti-Semite. How dare you tell Jews to leave Paris, that Paris should be you Rhine, clean of Jews, uh, uh, what a terrible thing. And this Jean-Marie Le Pen will say, moi, antisémite, mon fin. I just implemented the Oslo Agreement, and I just implemented what uh, you guys did uh, uh, when you took out the Jews uh, of Hebron, of Judea, Samaria. God forbid, I'm talking about 2,000 something. If God forbid they managed to take us out, which I will, we will not let them. Uh, uh, I am just implementing what you did uh, in uh, the land uh, of Israel, where you, if you uprooted Jews from their homeland, from their forefathers, from uh, Hebron, where your ancient roots are, why can't I do that in Paris? And you know what? He will be right. 
He will be right. What crazy people gives up? Does a nation give up its homeland? It's, it's where its forefathers are? Does a nation give up what is, what is his? That is not normal. And therefore, the main reason we are fighting against giving away parts of the land of Israel is because it is ours, and a normal nation doesn't give it up. And uh, uh, the, all the other reasons are reasons. Uh, uh, if you go on, if to the next, to the next uh, picture, which is a picture I love, where this is. Uh, sometimes people forget how big uh, Israel is. This is Israel compared to France. Uh, uh, talking about France, uh, sometimes, of course, again in this room we all know this, but sometimes people are shocked to remember that Israel is small with Judea, Samaria, and Gaza is smaller than the state of New Jersey. And in that little uh, 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 piece, they, still, they tell us that they need another uh, uh, country. Because, you know, you understand the Arabs, they don't have enough room. They don't have enough room to have a country. Let's go on to the next picture. Alan, one second. They don't have enough room. Go on. Here. Yeah, see, they don't have enough space. The Arabs, they, they're poor. They really, they don't know where to have another country. They have 22 countries and they don't have enough. Here you see that yellow, little yellow spot there, that's Israel, and, and Israel must give up more land to create another Arab state because the poor Arabs need more room. I read an article that said that, um, uh, uh, I forgot by whom, this uh, American Dafka uh, uh, actor wrote about the real problem in the Middle East is like a football soccer field. It's a, uh, the Middle East is like a huge soccer field, beautiful and green and well kept, and in the middle of the soccer field you have a little box of matches. And the owners of the soccer field say, we just want half of that box of matches, that's all we want. When he says all they want is to kick out the uh, box of matches so that we'll have an entire soccer field, uh, uh, the green and beautiful and clean of Jews, and that is what they want. And we have to say this, we, we have to understand and tell the youth and the next generation, and the students who are being attacked uh, uh, um, in, 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 in campuses now, don't be shy to say, this is our land, and uh, the Arabs have plenty of other places of where, where to have a country, but not in our land. Now, unfortunately, all this is known to us, uh, um, and despite the fact that it was proven that the Oslo agreements, uh, the, the, the uh, um, policy of capitulation to terror is a mistake. Um, you know, when we spoke in 93, we were labeled right-wing uh, extremists as you said. And uh, when we were demonstrating with Women in Green against the Oslo Agreement, we were the labeled as the extremists, the warmongers. Uh, unfortunately now, uh, uh, many Jewish, many deaths later, many uh, uh, victims later, uh, uh, the majority of the Jewish people elected in Israel a government clearly stating that the majority of the Jewish people do not want anymore a policy of capitulation and of weakness. Uh, but despite all that, and despite the fact that it was proven that the Arabs do not want peace, if we needed any more proof after Gaza, it was proven once again after we left Gaza that uh, uh, um, when you leave and you give the Arabs land, they will just use that as a another terror base, and we who have been labeled the extremists and the warmongers, uh, uh, when we said that the Qassams are going to fall on uh, are going to fall on Ashdod and Ashkelon, we have been uh, shown to be right, like in 1938, uh, when only one man was shouting gewalt in uh, Britain, Churchill was saying, don't sign any agreement, Chamberlain, you're being so naive, you're being so foolish, don't sign any agreement with Hitler, he doesn't want only the Sudetenland, he wants uh, to use that to take all of, over all of Europe. Nobody listened to Churchill, but at least um, in later, when everybody realized that Hitler only used this uh, Munich uh, peace agreement to, to take over all of Europe, uh, um, uh, Chamberlain had the decency to apologize and to say he was wrong and to ally himself uh, uh, be, be, behind Winston Churchill in fighting the, the Nazi beast. Unfortunately, the left in Israel still has not said uh, we made a mistake, the Oslo agreements were a mistake, we should not have shaken uh, the hands of Yasser Arafat, we should not have uh, uh, trusted Arafat in, in giving him an army, etc. But the people of Israel, the, so the Oslo architects still have not said we were, so, we're sorry and we were wrong, but the people of Israel the majority of the Jewish people, thank God, understand that now more than ever, 
especially after Gush Katif, the time had, has come to stand firm on the land of Israel. And three years ago, Judith and I started working together exactly with that understanding and with the understanding that sometimes it is the people, us, just as people, the, that have to, to push the politicians uh, uh, to do the right things. Uh, yesterday on Shabbat we read in uh, the parasha, Kiti uh, Said, Rosh Bnei Israel, when you count the people of Israel, you should tell them to give the, uh, half a shekel to the Mishkan. And uh, uh, some rabbi, Rabbi Zevin, says that it, it, the translation of Kiti Said, Rosh Bnei Israel, is not really when you count the people of Israel, but raise the, peop raise the heads of the people of Israel. And uh, he explains there that the difference between uh, uh, an animal and human being is that a uh, Human being is, has his head high up, uh, you know, erect and, uh, and, and up, and a human being always looks uh, uh, on the grass and uh, at the ground looking for basic, to satisfy his basic needs and nothing else. But a human being should have his head up to fulfill God's commandments and up, head up in ideology and spiritual things. And the same thing with a nation. A nation is only respected when it's hold, it's, it, it holds its head up. And what does it mean to hold your head up? To be a proud nation. It is to stay loyal to your heritage. It is to stay loyal to your tradition. It is to stay loyal to your homeland and stick to your homeland. And when after the disengagement, after Gush Katif, after the expulsion, we understood that more than ever, we, the people, must push this government in raising their head and being once again proud leaders who say, and I'm not scared to say, the entire land of Israel belongs to the people of Israel, uh, 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 based on the Torah of Israel, based on the inheritance of, uh, uh, of Israel. And based on the previous uh, heroic acts, like you did describe when they, 13 women, just went in 79 to Hebron and decided that because the leaders were reluctant to, to reclaim Hebron, they did it. 13 women, 45 children entered that building and after a year of standing there in this building in the most difficult conditions, the government allowed the renewal of the Jewish community of Hebron, we understood that we have to once again be even more active than ever. And one of the play, and, and in fighting for this land, in fighting for each and every hill, I don't know if you know, but for the past few years since Oslo, but especially for the past few years, the Arabs have been funded uh, and incited uh, by the Europeans and also unfortunately by U.S. money, U.S. aid, and for those who haven't been in, in Israel for a while, if you drive in Judea and Samaria, also in the Galil and the Negev, but there's been an incredible uh, takeover, or illegal takeover of land by Arabs, uh, Israeli state land, all over Judea and Samaria, funded by millions of dollars uh, 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 the European Union, who helped the Arabs under the pretense of helping the poor Palestinian agriculture, but really helping them take over land that belongs to us in order to try to choke us, in order to put facts on the ground to create a Palestinian state. And we are saying we have to fight this because the call for the creation of a Palestinian state, a so-called two-state solution, is really a call for the destruction of the state of Israel. The creation of a Palestinian state in Judea and Samaria is if, if leaving Gaza brought Qassams on Shderot and Ashkelon Alone, just imagine if you can go back to that map with the with the arrows of how close it is, uh, uh, leaving God forbid Judea and Samaria. No, not uh, another map. Leaving Judea and Samaria. Here we go. Uh, uh, leaving Judea and Samaria, uh, 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 11 miles from Tel Aviv and uh, nine miles from Natanya. I mean, I know I don't have to tell you that here in this crowd, but we have to make people realize that uh, the, co the call by world leaders pressuring Israel now, despite the fact that the majority of the people of Israel have said no more concessions, pressuring us to create a Palestinian state in Judea and Samaria, that, that is a call for the destruction of the state of Israel, for uh, the call for Qassams on Tel Aviv, on Haifa, on Netanyahu, and we were not, we're not going to let this happen. One of the many battles we are involved with, and that is what we're going to see a movie about in a few seconds, is a struggle about a hill not far from Jerusalem called Jdema. Jdema is a hill that uh, um, is south of Jerusalem. Have you ever been in Hachoma? Hachoma is the neighborhood uh, um, south of Jerusalem, which was a battle in itself to build Hachoma. And between Hachoma and Gush Etzion, um, there's, a, there's a new road there, which, by the way, 
you did and I and all our friends, the activists had to be active also in fighting to open that road because that road had been closed for years to Jewish traffic and we had to go there every Friday and burst through and march and do all kinds of things and now thank God the road is open because when you do things then it works. <laughs> and a year ago we found out in an article that uh, this abandoned army camp because it had been it's an uh, it's this hill called Jdema, which used to be an army camp and was abandoned uh, uh, and because of political reasons uh, was going to be given if, uh, to given away to the to the uh, neighborhood of Bethlehem Betzachur and they wanted to turn it into a, um, uh, a new, an Arab neighborhood even though it's completely Israeli controlled land and we said hey what's going on here after Gush Katif we're going to let another area being given away to the Arabs no way we immediately created the committee for a Jewish uh, Shdema with women in green and uh, an activist from Jerusalem, from Kiyadar Bachivron, from Efrat, from Gush Etzion, and we said, we are going to do something about this. And we started coming every week. And we, in the beginning we came, and the buildings that you're going to see in a minute were empty buildings, abandoned, barracks. And we put some graffiti on it, you know, Jewish stars and Magen David and saying that we returned, we're not going to give this away. The next week, we come there and we see very strange graffiti in English, very strange words, Paidia and Ushgrab. A friend of ours made some research and found out the most incredible thing, and you must Google when you come home those two names, Paidia, P-A-I-D-I-A, and also Ushgrab. We found out that this is not a simple matter of a few Arabs of Bethlehem trying to take over. Over this hill, we found out that Paidia is this international organization, funded European organization, sending anarchists to different Arab uh, uh, towns, especially around Bethlehem, to help incite the Arabs fight against the Jewish settlers, so against the Jews living in Judea and Samaria, and uh, they work together with a group of architects who work according to the philosophy of decolonizing. If you Google the word decolonizing, you're going to see the most horrendous, I mean, you must take a pill against nausea before you, you do that, and uh, uh, you're going to see this most incredible website by Israel haters who plan with architects the destruction of the entire settlement enterprise and somehow, we don't know why, they, their symbol of the struggle for those so-called poor Palestinians, who uh, poor Arabs who have been oppressed by the Jews, when exactly the opposite is the truth, is this what they call Ushgrab and we call Jdema. And when we saw that they are really struggling to turn this hill into this symbol of freedom for those terrorists, the PA, we decided to even get our acts together even stronger and we were going to we are going to fight for this Dema even more than we intended to before we knew this incredible thing and we created we're, we're going to turn off this thing and we're going to see the movie in a second uh, um, we 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 decided that one of the many battles is the battle for a Jewish Dema, and we're going to see the movie in a second. But if you think that we're only involved with Dema, the, the topic of today is activism. Really, I'm going to take another minute, and then we're going to see the movie. The topic is, what is it to be an activist? And... Uh, you might think that when I talk to you about us going on roads and you did and I uh, and all our friends going on the roads and bursting through, you might think that we don't have family, so you might think that we don't have children, that we don't have other things to do. So that is not the case. You did has, thank God, five uh, uh, children, seven grandchildren. I have, uh, thank God, six uh, children, and uh, we're all mommies and, and grandmothers, etc. But we understand that we have a mission, and that we, the mission of the grassroots is to pull to, to, to pull the leaders, and not only to save the land of Israel, but to really save Western civilization. I don't know if you know, but one of the main slogans of the Palestinian Authority is, first the Saturday people, then the Sunday people. First, let's get rid of the Jews by getting rid of the Jewish state, and then let's get rid of the Christians. Uh, and that is the real war, and that is what they're trying to hide from us. The real war is not about Judith living in Kirat Arba and Nadia Matar living in Efrat. They don't care about Efrat, and they don't care about Kirat Arba. They want everything. Thing. They want the entire Israel. They want the salami method of let's first try to create a Palestinian state in Judea and Samaria so we can get rid of Tel Aviv. And that is only the, entre, uh, as you say in French, l'entrée, the first course. The main course is Europe, which already people are calling Eurabia. And I'm sure you're going to hear more about this when Geert Wilders is going to tell you the most incredible things that are happening in Europe. So when we fight for a strong Israel, uh, 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 we are not only fighting 
fighting for Israel to stand strong, but we are fighting for the entire Western civilization. That is what I tell European journalists who come to me. I said, I don't need you to help me. We have God on our side, okay? You guys have to worry. You have to be on our side because Europe is in danger and afterwards also America. And that is the real message. The real war that is taking place here is a war of Islam, fundamentalist Islam against the Judeo-Christian civilization, against the Western civilization. We must stand firm to keep Israel strong so that the entire Western civilization will be able to fight this new, this new kind of Nazism, which is Islam. And how does Israel stand strong? By it's what keeps Tel Aviv strong? The settlement enterprise. So our call today is help us fight for Jdema, and Jdema is just an example of the struggle for the, for, for, for the entire settlement enterprise because by, by, by having a strong settlement enterprise, we are protecting Tel Aviv, which is protecting the entire Western civilization. We are calling for the new government of Israel to bring a million Jews to Judea and Samaria. We are calling upon the new government of Israel not to, to raise its head and proudly create new communities in Judea and Samaria. We are calling upon the government of Israel to stand strong with, uh, 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 for, for, for the Jewish people, for the entire Western civilization. Um, now we're going to see the movie about Jdema, but one more thing, now I have to remember, an activist. An activist has to, uh, has to be active in par parallel in three different levels. It's the fight on the ground, which we're going to see in Jdema. It means coming there, fighting for Jdema, fighting for the land, organizing events that we organize every week. Parallel to that, we need a massive Hasbara campaign. We need to explain to the people, to the, to the people in Israel and to the world what we're doing. It's, it means po posting ads, it means doing Hasbara, it means explaining what we just discussed. All the things that we, uh, uh, I heard there's an organization called Stand With Us, who, ha who, has, uh, who helps the youth, you heard about it. Uh, uh, so it's Hasbara and political lobbying. To be an activist is to be active on all those levels. On the local level of fighting for the actual hilltops, on the level of Hasbara, or how do you translate Hasbara, PR, uh, public relations, massive public relations to always be there, to always answer. Sometimes Judith and I are cooking for Shabbat and we get a phone call. We get a phone call. Uh, did you hear such and such thing happen? We drop everything and we have to go and we have to do. That is to be an activist. You know that sometimes, that's why we cook in the middle of the night, so usually that doesn't happen in the middle of the night. Hasbara is also to be able to bypass the leftist media. How, for instance, we were told uh, at one point that the, the Olmert government planned on, uh, on uh, calling upon all the Jews living in Judea and Samaria and on obligating us to put a sticker on our car so that our car should be labeled. How did they explain that to us? It is to help you to pass more easily at the checkpoints. Of course, anybody who thinks about that in a minute, with a number. We were supposed to go to the office and get a number on our car so that we should pass more easily, so we should know that you live in Judea and Samaria, you should pass more easily. Right away, we understood, the activists, that is, is absolutely not, this is after the expulsion, that is, is not the case at all, and the real thing that they want to do, they're already preparing the expulsion from Judea and Samaria by labeling us, by, by already putting on the cars labels of who's a settler, who's not a settler, who could be a troublemaker, we said, no way. We must warn the people not to go and get those stickers. But how do you do that? The, the media is, is, uh, is, um, is left-wing. They're not going to say anything about this. And Internet is a strong uh, 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 thing. But in Israel, I don't know how it is here, the majority of the people are not, still need to receive the newsletter, the, the actual newsletter in their, land, in their hands. So we decided we must make a newsletter to inform the people and to give them the information that the government is trying to hide from them. And that is when we made uh, three newsletters. Uh, the newsletter about the stickers, was the, we did it in English and in Hebrew, because there's a lot of people, Olim Chadashim, thank God, who live uh, and still need to to, to understand the, the language. And here, ID tags at the checkpoints are bad for the Jews. We explain this, we put this in all the mailboxes, and you know what? The large majority of the people did not go and they did not succeed. They did not succeed in labeling us. It's a small victory showing... Showing that when you think that, you, that you, there's nothing you can do, oh, I can't do anything, it's a decree from the government. No, 
We have power. 13 women brought back Jewish life to Hebron. We're not going to stop those ID tags. We are going to, and we did. But of course, that is uh, certainly, uh, uh, it was only in Judea. If we were, uh, would be able to have a newsletter for the entire country, how much more so would we be able to be successful? But back to Shdema, we're going to see a movie now about the Jewish struggle for Shdema.